Hello guys and welcome again to another edition of Learning with Rich. So for today's topic as a continuation to our mechanical project exercise, I'm going to show you how to use the heating and cooling loads uh, analysis in Revit 2017. Okay, but the first thing that we are going to do first okay, is to create a zone. Okay, I have an exercise before on how to create zones. So if you want, you can review that exercise. Okay, and I also have an exercise on how to create uh, spaces. Okay, because you need space in order for you to create zones. Why? Because zones is a collection of spaces. Okay, and we need these spaces and zones as uh, setting up for our heating and cooling load analysis. All right, so let's get started. So I'm gonna open the level one here, okay? And the, f and the first thing that you need to check is if your zone, uh, zone name, or I mean the space name is the same as the room name. So you need to check that one. Like for example, this is the space. I'm going to select this. And then from the properties, you just need to check the identity data so as you can see the architect here the room number says 101 and then the room name is office so we need to follow that so if the room number here on the architect is 101 so you need to change this also to 101 so if the room name here for architect when the architect created the archi model is office so you need to change that also to office okay so you need to check first so that we'll be able to create our uh, spaces properly. So we need to follow the naming of the architect for the naming of our spaces. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay, so I'll select the reception here. Okay, so this, this is the space. So as you can see, the room number here is 102. So the room name is reception, so I'm going to change this also to reception. Okay, and then I apply. Okay, but if you are on subscription with Autodesk, there is this tool that will allow you to rename the spaces based on the name of our architectural model room and room number. Okay, so if you are on subscription with Autodesk, you will be having this tool. Okay, where are you? You go to the analyze here. You can see there the space naming. Actually, even if you are not on subscription, you should be able to see this space naming tool here. It assigns the names and numbers from architectural rooms to MEP spaces used for building performance analysis. Okay. So you just need to select spacing. So instead of um, changing the spaces manually, you just need to select space naming. So I select space naming. So as you can see, the options here is, is uh, names and numbers. So this is the example. So it becomes like this. The spaces will follow the name of your room, which is very useful, right? So I just select your names and numbers and all levels. And then I select OK. OK, so if I'm going to double check it, as you can see the, the storage here. If you're having a difficulty selecting the space, just like me, I'm having a difficulty. You just need to hover your pointer to the space tag here, and then you just need to tab, tab, and then you can click that space. Okay, so you see it's now automatically changed. See, no need for you to change this manually. So you just need to use the uh, space naming. Okay. Uh, let me check this also. So, again, if you're having uh, difficulty selecting the space on the exam here, although it's not difficult. Okay, so you just hover your pointer to the tag, and then you just need to press the tab once. And then you click. It highlights the space. As you can see, it automatically changed the name here. Okay, so this tool is very useful. You can use the space naming tool. Okay, now after we change 
the name of our spaces based on the name of the room number and room name. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this. Duplicate. You just need to right click, duplicate, duplicate. And then you just need to change this. Change the name. Let's say this is my zone. Oops. Zone plan. Okay. Zone plan and then okay. So in Revit, you can create zones that represent areas served by one piece of mechanical equipment. So properly defined zones allows you to size the equipment based on the cumulative information of the spaces grouped within a zone. So each zone contains information about heating and cooling, temperatures, and outdoor air. So this information is used by Revit during the heating and cooling loads analysis to determine the energy demands of the building. Okay? Or you can also use the zones if you want to uh, base your zone on the name of, your, of the location. Let's say this portion is your uh, north northwest. Let's say this is your southwest. So let's say this is your uh, northeast. Let's say this is your southeast. Okay, you can base it on the name on part of the building. All right, or you can also call this zone AHU1. Example, this is AHU2, AHU3, AHU4. Okay, so it's up to you. So how to create a zone? So to create a zone, so this is how you do it. So, you just need to select Analyze, and then there's the zone. I have an exercise of this one, so you can review that. So, I select Zones. Okay. And then, I'm going to... Wait. Okay, so, let me just check. So, Analyze, Zone... Okay, so add space is selected. So we need to select the space. So I'm going to select this space. This is space here. Uh, where else? This is space. Space here. This one and this one. Okay. So I can call this. Let's say that is my... Let's say this portion will be controlled by AHU1. Okay, and then I'm going to apply. Or it's up to you, how do you want to call your zone? So let's say this zone will be controlled by my air handling unit number one. Apply, and then I finish. Okay, so let's say I select again the zone. I click this one, so this is my corridor. So let me just call it a uh, corridor. As you can see, it's very intuitive, right? It follows the name of my previous uh, zone. So, I'll, I'll call this one Corridor. Or let's say uh, AHU2. Apply and then finish. So, this portion. So, I'm going to select Zone. So, the architect didn't create the room here and uh, space. I, we didn't create the space. So, I'll just click this one. This is space here. Space space and then this one okay so this one is my ahu3 finish where else this portion so i select zone click this one click this one and this one that's my ahu4 finish zone again okay i'm going to select this big space here this one and then this one Alright, and then I'll select finish. There you go. So if I'm going to hover my pointer aside from the space, I also able to select the zone, right? So if I click the zone, so you will notice there are properties that you can modify from here. For the designer, so you just need to key in here what is the service type of that zone, what is the cooling information, heating information of that zone, and then the outdoor air information, okay? Since you are already, 
you are a designer, so you should be able to know this one. Okay? So I'm just showing you how to use it. Okay? But I'm not a designer. Okay? Alright. So this is the zone here. Again, you can you also see here the dimensions. And again, you can modify this one. Okay, so another thing, so let's say for example, I'm going to select the uh, analyze here. I can also specify the location of my project for my heating and cooling loads calculation. So let's say here, I'm going to type a place. So let's say this is my place, Batangas, Philippines. Oops. Okay, and let me search it. There you go. So that's my location. That's the location of my project. So the heating and cooling loads calculation will be based on this location. And then I select here, OK. I'm not going to use daylight savings time because this is not a daylight saving time country. So I'll just select OK. There you go. And another thing, you can also select here the energy settings. So you may want to modify the mode. Okay, so these options here and also the advanced option, you just click edit. Okay, what is the building type of this project? So you can click this one. You just need to select what is the HVAC system. Okay, you can click and modify this option before you go to the heating and cooling loads calculation. Okay. And then I'll just select OK after you change uh, change properties. Okay, so after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select now the heating and cooling loads. So I select this. So this is the tool that you use. So it prepares a heating and cooling loads analysis report based on the existing building model. So take note that space, uh, spaces should be placed in all areas accounting for the entire volume of the building to achieve an accurate heating and cooling loads analysis. Okay, so I'll just select this one. And then from the heating and cooling loads, you will see now your analytical model. So we call this the analytical model. So as you can see, so these are the spaces that we have create and zones, these greens. Okay, and then again, you can modify the general properties here as well as the details. So I select the details. And then as you can see, this is questionable. So there is a warning here. So these are the zones that we have created and then this is the default. So if I'm going to expand the zone here, so you will see the spaces that is related to, to that particular zone. Again, as a designer, you select the zone here and then you modify the properties here. Like for example, what is the building type of this zone here? So you can click that and then you can specify the service type. Same with the heating information of that particular zone. So you can select the ellipsis button and then you just need to specify the information here. Okay. If you want, you can also select, let's say for example, where is this office 101? You can actually highlight that and then you will see it will highlight or you can actually isolate that. There you go. You see, uh, whenever you select, it highlights. So let me just turn off this, turn off this. Okay, so we can use this one. All right, so this is the zone properties. And then if you click one space, it will show you also the property of that particular space. Again, as a designer, so you need to specify what is the build space type, construction type, how many people and area that will occupy that particular space, what is the electrical loads, okay? So you should know this one because you are, you are the designer. I just know how to use the Revit, but I'm not the designer. I'm just showing you where to uh, specify it, okay? So this is your zone properties. This is your space properties, all right? Now, after you modify your heating and cooling loads, the next thing that you need to do is to calculate now. Calculate. And then you just need to wait. All right, so let us wait for a while. 
So let's wait. Alright, so this is now the summary of the calculation. So this is the name of the project. We didn't change the name of the project. So this is this is actually the summary of your heating and cooling loads report. So this is the project summary. So this is the building summary. So as you can see, there's the calculated result, the peak cooling total load, the peak heating load in watts. Okay. So you can see here the summary of each space. So if I click this one, it, it will go to the space. See this one, this is the space. And then this is the calculation for that one. Okay, so it's a very nice tool. Okay, that you can use for your uh, project. So you can use the Revit to generate this heating and cooling loads report. Now, in case you close the report, you can still go to the project browser, slider down, you just look for the reports here. So you just need to expand that, expand this one, and then you can see the report. There you go. So you will be going back again to that uh, report. So as we scroll down through, we can see the building summary. So this gives us our zones and all our cooling and heating loads, default spaces, corridor zone, okay? So here's our load report, okay? Now, after that, just a quick one. Going back to my zone plan, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a color fill legend, okay? So I'm going to select color fill legend. So let me just uh, place it somewhere here. I click. And then from the space type, instead of spaces, I'm going to select HVAC zones. And then I'm going to select here, OK. Right. Okay, so this is now my uh, color scheme legend. So if I want to modify this one, so I'm going to select this color fill legend, and then I can edit the scheme. All right. So I can specify here the name as well as the color so let's say oh I don't want that to be based on the name I want that to be based on the calculated supply airflow so I select this just select OK and then you will see here the value okay and then I select here OK there you go okay so I can also select this and then go to the edit type. I can show the title here. I can still modify here the color fill legend if I want. And then I select here. Okay. There you go. Okay. All right. So there you go. I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, uh, you can put it on the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. And don't forget to visit my blog, learningwithreach.wordpress.com. Okay, and once again, thank you for watching. Have a nice day.